This is the original Jump King game. And this is my recreation of it. Today I will show you how I added some more interesting stuff, such as platforms that will break if you stand on them, combo multiplier and much more. Last time we have done some level design and added the player with a pogo stick, which is different from the original Jump King game, but I think it makes a pretty good gameplay when you have to calculate how much you want to jump and where you want to jump. So it is like a combination of the Getting Over It game and the Jump King game. And because we have already in our game a pogo stick, I thought that we could add a trampoline, so I looked at a video on YouTube. And even though this simulation looked really nice, I think in my case it would take me a year to do so. I wanted to come up with a simpler solution, but it didn't end up well. Then I have tried using hinge joints and fixed joints, and you can see that it is still falling apart. But here with this prototype, you can see that it is kind of moving like a trampoline, the player is able to jump on it, so maybe at some point I will do a bit more work on this and add it to the game. Next I wanted to add some moving platforms and these were really easy to add. I just had to take the sprites and put them outside of the tile map and add a spring joint to them. Then just freeze the rotation on the rigid body and we have pretty nice moving platform. Then I wanted to add like a new level to this game which should be a castle level which is pretty similar to the Jump King. So again into the tile map I'm putting some of the sprites, I have added some stairs and even nice little tower with a window. Then it took me about 15 days to edit all of the physical colliders of the stairs, because there is many stairs, but I was able to do it. And now we can see that the player is able to pretty realistically jump on the stairs, like each individual stair has its individual collision. And I also managed to pull out this pretty cool trick. Next comes a bigger tower in which I wanted to add like pretty thin platforms. Yeah, this was close, but we are able to jump into the next tower. Because we are in the castle level and we have some kind of brick tiles, I also wanted to add the functionality that if you stand on some of them, they will begin to break and then you will fall, so that it is constantly pushing the player and the player just has to move. Just a quick reminder that I can also teach you individually anything about Unity, Bolt or C Sharp because I just can't fit all of the information into these videos or I can also help you with your personal projects or with the features you are trying to implement so feel free to reach out to me and we can have an individual lesson. One hour lesson costs 10 euros and is on Google Meet. I first thought that it would be easy to make the movement of the tile with an animation, but I realized that I would have to make the animation for each tile, which isn't really effective, so I created a new script. I added some basic variables, such as the respawn delay, the duration of the time for how long the block will be breaking, then a boolean is breaking, and boolean is respawned. Also transform for the target, which is the block that we want to destroy. Then a time to destroy, which we will later use to change the opacity of the block depending on after how much time it will destroy. Then a sprite renderer and a collider. On the start we just set the time to destroy to the duration, so to the maximum we assign the sprite renderer and the collider. In the update you can see that we are changing the color and it is just 111, so a white color and then the opacity is the time to destroy divided by the duration. And if the block is breaking, then I'm just calling a breaking movement, which is a custom void. And if the block is not breaking and is respawned, I'm setting the time to destroy to the duration again. And how do we actually know if the block is breaking, is respawned and so on? Well, we need to detect the collision. So if the block detects some collision on the layer 6, which is the player, and is respawned and is not breaking, then we start a coroutine, which I called break. Here we first set the time to destroy to the duration, set is breaking to true, because the player has just collided with the block, then we wait for the duration for how long it should be destroying, we set the collider is triggered to true, so the player can fall through it, we set is breaking to false, is respawn to false. We again wait for the time respawn delay. 
Then we are setting the collider is triggered to false, resetting the local position and setting is response to true. And the most important part is the void breaking movement, for which I have also defined a final position and a move speed. First, we are just subtracting the delta time from the time to destroy. Then we are setting the local position using the vector free .ler. And if the block has reached its final position, then I'm calculating new final position and setting a random move speed. And this is how it looked after the first try, not too bad. I have done a bit more polishing with the code and this is how it looks now. So you can see that when the player jumps on it, it begins to break and after some time it breaks completely so the player falls down. I think this is a pretty good way how to add more pressure to the player so that he has to be still moving. Here you can see another moving platform, I think it works pretty well. Next I also added some rotating platforms, this was pretty easy, just add a hinge joint. I think this is enough for the gas level, now let's move to the cave. So I repeated the same process, just adding some tiles to the edges of the map and also some breakable rocks which might surprise the player. Yep, so we have the hinge platforms, then we have the spring platform, then we have a pretty sketchy jump and some rocks that will break if you fall on them. One thing that I noticed about the player's rotation is that when you get to a certain degree, it starts doing some pretty weird stuff. So let's fix that. It took me pretty long time to figure out where the mistake was. I even had to draw some stuff in the Microsoft Paint so that I could realize it better, but even the Microsoft Paint couldn't help me. Then I asked GPT to help me come up with a new solution and it actually worked. So it is pretty much the same as the last code, but a bit different. Next thing that I also found weird about the pogo stick is that it was not extended from the beginning, which I think that pogo sticks is how they work, that from beginning they are extended and you can make them less extended and then jump. So I am still using the slider joint for the pogo stick, I just had to edit some stuff in the code. I was editing the void pogo jump. So when we are pressing the space, I actually assign a limits and motor of the joint. So I'm setting the minimum limits to the minimum as where it can be extended and the maximum to the maximum position where it can be extended, but I'm subtracting a number multiplied by a jump force. So when the jump force is maximum, which means 10, it will be like this. And when the jump force is minimum, it will be extended like this. And then if we are not pressing space and the jump force is greater than zero, which means that we should jump, I am again creating variables for the limits and the motor of the joint. I am setting the maximum limits to 1.3, which is the maximum extension. I then set the motor speed of the motor to the jump force, so it is trying to get into the fully extended position, which actually makes the player jump. And because we are making the player move just using the slider joint, we don't need to add any velocity to the player. I am also starting a coroutine called Pogo Reset. So after we jump, I wait for some time, I again created a variable for the motor and for the limits, I set the motor speed to zero so that it can freely move, I set the minimum limits to the 1.26, which is almost the full extended state because when I had it on the 132, which is the fully extended, then it was kind of glitching out, so the 1.26 is optimal for me, and again assigning the motor and the limits to the joint. And as you can see, because it is just physics based, it is bouncing even when I'm not pressing the space, and I think overall it is a lot more realistic. And one thing that I also like about this is that you can kind of chain the jumps, so we can jump, and if you are able to jump again before getting to the ground, the jump will be a lot higher. So that there is some experience for the players to gain, because some new players to this game might not be able to jump as high as the players who have played the game for longer time. And because I really like the idea of chaining the jumps, I wanted to make the player actually want to chain the jumps. So I added a multiplier and a combo. Combo will basically add each time when you are able to chain the jump 
and multiplier will add based on the consecutive jumps that you have made. So for example, if you are really experienced in the game, you could make 10 chain jumps and you would have a multiplier of 2, which means that you would jump even higher. Again, I think it will be a pretty fun because in later stages when you will have like a really small platform, but you will not be able to jump to the higher one, you will need to be constantly chaining the jumps on the small platform so that you are able to jump higher. So I have just added a text for the combo and for the multiplier. And then I went straight to the coding. So I created a float for the combo and multiplier, also a variable for the combo text and the multiplier text. Then I define a float time in combo range, which is just adding up time to the float depending on for how long we have been in a range where the combo actually counts. So if the player just falls to the ground and stays on the ground for too long, then the combo will reset. I have also made a private bool is in combo range, which is just returning a circle cast telling us if the player is in the combo range or not. And then when we are not pressing the space and the jump force is greater than zero, which means that we should jump, I'm checking if the player is in combo range. If it is true, we increase the combo and if not, then we will set it to zero. And if the player is in combo range, I am just adding the delta time to the time in combo range, else the combo range time is just zero. And if the player is in combo range and the time in combo range is greater than 0.25 seconds, then I set the combo back to zero. In the update, I am also easily calculating the multiplier and then increasing the jump force based on the multiplier. And here you can see that when I'm making the chain jumps, the combo is increasing and also the multiplier, but when I stop jumping, the multiplier will go back to one. So I think that this is a pretty nice feature to make the game a bit more skill-based. This video took me about 9 hours to make, so if you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!